welcome back to my youtube channel all about real estate hope you are all doing good so in this video we are going to start with the discussion of system functions so first we will start with the discussion of the first system function which is known as dollar rows and here the arguments is one expression okay now so basically this dollar rows will written uh, true if the signal uh, is changed from is changed to 1 and remains 1 in the current evaluation point okay so here if it detects a rising edge that is if it detects a rising edge from 0 to 1 at the current evaluation point then uh, the signal then this particular expression will return true okay so that is uh, here we are going to consider two time steps that is one is previous evaluation point and another is current evaluation point okay so for example, let us uh, take a clock. So this is my clock signal. Okay. So this is my clock signal. So this is my positive edges of clock. Now let us consider a signal uh, M or some expression M, uh, which is getting changed like this. So it is uh, 0 up to the second clock cycle and it is becoming 1 here and it is being 1 up to the second third clock cycle and it is becoming 0 and it is 0 and here it is becoming 1 okay and next clock edge okay so somewhere it is becoming 0 again okay so this is our clock and this is a signal which is M. So within a sequence, I am write. I am going to write this uh, particular dollar rows uh, function within a sequence. I am going to use this particular dollar rows function. So uh, I am going to declare a sequence. Sequence S C Q. The sequence name is S C Q. And at the rate passage of clock, at the rate passage of clock, what I am going to check is dollar rows of M. Okay, and end the sequence. So this sequence I will include in a property. So that already we have discussed. Again, I will, I'm showing once more, one more time. So property, the name of the property, let's say it is PPT. So the sequence here we have declared is SCQ. Okay. And end property. Okay. And for uh, asserting this property, I will use the keyword assert property PPT. That's it. So this is how I'm going to uh, assert the property now. So let us try to analyze how this uh, way, how, where this particular assertion is getting passed and where this assertion is getting failed. So let us uh, mark this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, so at this particular evaluation point at the first clock edge, the value we should not consider this value actually because the values are sampled in the pre pawn region. So the, the region before this particular clock edge here, this value should be considered. Okay. As in the, as we have seen in the SV event scheduler that uh, the values are getting sampled in the pre pawn region. So not, we should not consider the values exactly the posture edge of the clock, but before the event of the clock. So this value we are going to consider. So it is equal to zero. So here it is equal to zero. So we don't know the previous value at the first instance. So it, uh, the assertion is getting failed at the first clock edge. Now the second clock edge here, uh, the previous, the present value was equal to zero at the current evaluation point. What I've told, so we should not consider the value at the same clock edge at the current clock edge, but before the post edge. Okay. So the value was zero at the current evaluation point. So this is current evaluation point. And here the previous at the previous evaluation point, your value was zero. Okay. So there is no transition from zero to one in the current evaluation point and previous evaluation point. So that's why here the function is going to fail. It is going to return zero. So assertion is get, going to get failed. Okay. And here at the third clock edge, if you observe before the post edge of the clock, your value was one, <clears throat> your value was equal to one. So at the current evaluation point, the value is equal to one and in the previous evaluation point, your value is equal to zero. So there is a transition from zero to one in the current evaluation point and previous evaluation point. So that's why your assertion is going to get passed at this particular <coughs> clock edge. 
okay now at the fourth clock edge your value was equal to zero okay at the current evaluation point your value is equal to zero and the previous evaluation point it was equal to one so there is a transition from one to zero so that's why your assertion is going to get failed Similarly, at the fifth clock edge, your value is equal to zero. It's not one, it's zero. We are not going to consider the value which is present in the exact pause edge, but before the positive edge of the clock, okay? And it is equal to zero and the previous evaluation point, it is also zero. So there is no transition. So the assertion is getting failed, okay? And here at the sixth clock edge, let me mark with it with another color. One here. Yes. So at the sixth clock edge, here you can see the value is equal to one and at the previous evaluation point, it was equal to zero. So there is a transition. So here a session gets passed. And at the seventh clock edge, the, uh, the current evaluation, uh, at the current evaluation point, the value is equal to one and at the previous evaluation point, the value was equal to one. So it is getting passed. At the seventh clock edge, you, will getting, you are getting a pass message, okay? So uh, at the first clock edge, your assertion will get failed. At the second clock edge, it will get failed. And at the third clock edge, it will get passed. Fourth, it is failed. Fifth, it is failed. And sixth, it is passed. Seventh, it is getting passed. So this is how your dollar rows function is going to work. I hope you have got a clear idea about how the dollar rows function is working. So if you like this video, please like, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel, All About Real Estate. Thank you.